Hello and good evening. My name is Ryan said is Joshua Marks. And if you're thinking that I'm that guy from the Nova Cafe, then you're right. <laughs> if you've been there in the last five years, you've probably gotten served by me. If not, I don't know what to tell you. You got to go. <laughs> Though you may have received many things from me there, the one thing you've definitely never gotten is a penny. It's possible I've given you a dime or nickels, but it's only because someone happened to leave me a pile of change as a tip and I was trying to unload it on someone else. The only time this has ever been a problem was about four years ago when a man was leaving and caught me to say that I shorted him five cents. Well, do you want it? I asked. No. Well, then have a great day. Based on this rather irresponsible habit of mine, I conceived of the idea for this nonprofit a few years ago and decided it was time to share it with the world. So here goes. It's basically a movement that starts right now with all of us decision makers and business owners to round the prices and items of services offered through our businesses to the nearest quarter, in effect demonizing the use of the dime, nickel, and penny. But at the same time, we will collect them monthly to put towards a nonprofit that sponsors progressive art programs in local schools. First, I'll explain how this is possible. Here in Montana, since we live in an extremely beautiful state where people actually want to come and spend their money, we have the distinct opportunity to do this. Being one of only five states without sales tax, the price we list on items and services is exactly the price we collect. If business owners as a group decided to round their prices to the nearest quarter, we would wholly eliminate the need for such lesser coins. We will then establish a system to gather the unnecessary coins. Collecting the coinage will be done once a month on the 25th, and then our participating banks will count them and deposit them into the nonprofit's account. Students at neighborhood schools will then have the opportunity to apply for monies to be used at their school to support creativity-based projects and programs for their choosing. You may be wondering why raise money for the arts. And it has to do with my creative life experience. <laughs> I was brought up in a rather large family in the suburbs of Detroit. My parents and older siblings always stressed the importance of academics, and that's something that I would never want to change. I attended Catholic school from first grade through high school, and except for required grade school art classes that were more busy work than the fostering of a development of a truly artistic mind and perspective, my life was devoid of anything even remotely creative. It wasn't until my third year out of seven of college that I decided to move in a more creative direction. My first class was a figure drawing class at Wayne State University in which I realized that I was one of the lucky ones that has a natural ability to draw. It was also good to know that that ability could lay dormant instead of deteriorating from misuse. And after finally getting my degree in interior architecture and acquiring skills like drawing, painting, fabrics, CAD, and just being able to effectively present and defend my creative projects, I have acquired a new set of eyes and a more descriptive vocabulary in which to view and make judgments and therefore interpret the world around me. These are skills that I would be more than happy to leave as my legacy to future generations whose creative existence now hangs in the balance. Given this importance, I feel that it should be placed on the value of arts throughout one's educational lifetime. The current way things are done is insufficient. Federal and state funding for arts programs in elementary and secondary schools is a, in a less than impressive state. Although the nominal increase over the past 25 years is positive and landscape for public funding for the arts in this time period is much bleaker when accounting for inflation, in fact, this adjustment, with this adjustment, public funding for the arts has decreased by more than 30% overall. Regardless of what your views are on politics, religion, and life's other important matters, it's hard to deny the facts concerning the richness of an, an education involving the arts. Students who study art are four times more likely to be recognized for academic achievement and three times more likely to be awarded for outstanding school attendance. Researchers find that sustained learning in music and theater correlates strongly with higher achievement in both math and reading. 
Multiple studies have concluded that curricular and extracurricular art studies and activities help to keep high-risk dropout students in school. And also, new brain research shows that not only does music improve skills in math and reading, but it promotes creativity, social development, personality adjustment, and self-worth. Luckily, the new education bill that passed the US Senate in July of this year still includes the arts as part of the core academic subjects in elementary and high school. We in Bozeman already have a leg up on the rest of the country since we are lucky enough to live, in my humble opinion, in the most beautiful place. Our youth are exposed to the outdoors in a way that the rest of the world can only imagine. And that fact, along with strengthening their exposure to cutting edge art, will ensure that we turn out some of the best candidates for making the world the place we all imagine that it can be. To the quarter, we'll focus on art projects and programs that recognize our ever evolving, evolving world that are on the cutting edge of art education and methods. In order to attract others to get involved and do the same, I have already changed the prices in all of my various creative-based businesses and rounded to the quarter. For the minimal alterations involved, the reward will be no less than changing the future. I believe that Bozeman is the best town to start this program since we have such an involved, caring, participatory community always looking for ways to improve. The initial chapter here will act as a pilot program that I that I will spread to not only other cities in Montana, but into each of the five states eventually. What I ask of you tonight is to voice your support and encouragement for this movement by telling your friends, business owners, or just dropping me an email and telling me how you feel about my idea. Thanks for listening.